something means the world to me really. Probably 90% of the week is focused around swimming. Generally when you're in the pool, I find that I swim better when I'm not thinking about anything. This is a bit fascinating race, absolutely fascinating race this. Every single, every single Olympic cycle there's always a surprise, there's always a surprise on who actually makes the team. There's quite a big gap to make, but I knew if I went in there and kind of gave them my best, there's a chance of chance of making the teams. It's not going to be a surprise to his coach and the people at Sheffield, but we were all looking at Roberto Pavoni and Daniel Wallace. But look at him, absolutely fine. He's only got 15 metres to go, Bob. 4.12.08 is a qualifying time. He's looking for the great British record. It's He's going to do it. In He's going to do it. 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 He's done it by three, one hundredths of a second. Max Lichford has done it. He's got the qualification time for Rio 2016. To make one Olympics was amazing and if I was able to go on again and, and do that in Tokyo, I'd, uh, it'd, be, it'd be fantastic. That was kind of, that's always been my dream. Obviously to make it was my dream, but you kind of always want to you, gotta, you, you always want to win that medal and kind of stand on that podium. My name is Joe Litchfield and I'm Max Litchfield's brother. I am very proud of Max. Uh, I remember going to, well, um, I went to Rio to watch him. And I never really like had nerves for Max, like, because I just, I'm normally either swimming next to him or at the same gala or something like that. I had butterflies in my stomach. I wanted him to do well. I didn't want him to like, do something wrong and then miss the final. Yes, there's a, probably a hint of jealousy, but like, I just make, if I see him at Rio, like, it makes me want to go for Tokyo even more. It makes me want to sort of just try and beat him. You know? At the end of the day, we want what's best for us individually, and obviously we want each other to do well, but at the end of the day, he's, he's someone else that's gonna, gonna be competing against me, so as much as kind of he is my brother and I love him, you've got to put that out, kind of out of your mind when you're racing him. When I race him, I think of him as a competitor. Like I want to beat him. I do like uh, racing. It's a good competition because I think me and him are hopefully in the next few years going to become the two people in the individual medley, the two dominant swimmers. They have a bit of banter about it. They don't really like getting each other's faces. They don't. It doesn't really make us any less of brothers, it just sort of spurs us on to do better. People have mentioned it before about, oh, you know, the next Brownlees, uh, one and two Olympics, or one and two, one and three in London as well. And we were, if we've said, if, if that ever happened, if we got anywhere near how successful they've been, it'd be absolutely amazing. Face. That was superb. We have seen a Litchfield double in the 400 IM, Joe in the target Tokyo, and now Max in the senior final. Look at that. Good luck. Look at this. I just remember kind of getting in the water when I was younger and just kind of enjoying it. Just being in the pool, I knew I was in the right place and um, I enjoyed it every time I got to the pool and every time I trained. So um, I kind of knew it was something I was going to go into later in life. Right now in swimming, it's, it's just about preparing myself for um, for this year and the next four years. So we've got trials in a couple of weeks now and then hopefully I can qualify for the Worlds. That's kind of the main focus now, but looking forward, it's obviously Tokyo. I could never swim again, I'd be pretty upset to be fair. Like I say, it's, it's literally my entire life, so I, I wouldn't know where to start. Kind of just tear my whole world apart.